Colby, welcome to Vegas. Um, it's a title show you've been waiting for for a long time, against Leon Edwards. How are you feeling this fight? We're going to head this fight. I feel amazing, man. I'm, it's great to be back on U.S. soil and, and get to defend my country and defend the honor of all our, you know, citizens here in America. So, you know, it feels great. Uh, you know, it could have been in the U.K., but he said an all-time fuck you to all the U.K. fans and said, no, I don't want to defend this title in the U.K. I'd rather come to U.S. soil. So history repeats itself. It's just going to be another 1776, and that means British don't come to America. You, can, you come to America, you're going home at D.A. Jr. I mean, the fact he, you said he didn't want to fight in the UK, do you feel like you're not only fighting for the US, but for the UK as well, you're UK fans? Yeah, yeah, I feel like I, you know, I, I need to go defend this title in the UK because they get robbed of a pay-per-view main event title fight, so I feel bad for the fans of the UK. They, they deserve better than what Leon's done to them, but that's why they were all screaming for Colby when Leon was fighting over there. They didn't even care about him because he has no redeeming qualities. I mean, the guy is a complete joke. He's low IQ. I'd love for the media to go ask him, like, what is his level of education? Did he even get through grade school? Uh, I haven't asked him that yet. Skill set wise, when you look at your skills against his, do you believe this is the traditional grappler versus striker matchup, or do you think you can match up with him on the feet as well? No, I can, I can beat him everywhere for sure. I love that everybody says that this is a striker versus grappler match. You can watch all the tape you watch on me, but I'm not the same fighter I was last time I stepped in the octagon. So Saturday night, you're going to see a completely different version of myself, and I'm going to outclass Leon. I'm going to bring out the dog in me. I'm going to bring out the quitter in Leon. You've been, uh, through no fault of your own, kept out of the cage, right? They've been trying to match you up with some guys. That hasn't happened, and I know that's frustrated you. Should you win the title this weekend, do you plan on being a fighting champion, an active champion? Yeah, I plan on being everything Leon isn't. And, you know, I'm going to be someone that's a champion for the fans, you know, that respects the fans that make this sport go around. So, you know, he doesn't care about the fans. He doesn't care about this company. I care about this company. This company changed my life. I love the UFC. God bless Ari. God bless Dana White, Hunter Campbell. Those guys have completely made uh, a broke blue-collar kid from Oregon, you know, a multi-million dollar freaking figure. So... You know, I'm so thankful to this company. I want to be an active champion. You know, Leon, he's turned down so many fights people don't even talk about. You know, I'm the one that had to save the day and be the apex predator and beat Woodley because he turned down when he had the sniffles. He had the sniffles and he turned down Woodley. And then he had a title fight with Usman in Abu Dhabi. He said, no, the sniffles again. Oh, no, I want a title fight. I want a title fight. They offered him a title fight. Oh, not that title fight. So what does that guy deserve? He doesn't want to fight. He just wants to sit on that placeholder belt that he has right now. So... It's okay. That's why Daddy Covington's here, to save the day for the UFC and all the fans out there. Weighing in his backup is Bilal Mohammed. That would seem to suggest the UFC want him to be the number one contender. Is that something you're interested in fighting? No, who, who wants to fight a racist? I mean, could you imagine if I said someone earned something off the color of their skin? That's absolutely despicable. It's disgusting. That guy hasn't deserved anything. I mean, it's not my fault that he's not a star. You have to make yourself a star. I'm the one that went out there and did the things that needed to be done to become a superstar like I have. What has he done? He hasn't done anything. He's out there race baiting, saying, oh, you only earned this because the color of his skin is white privilege. Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, he's not getting no title shot. There, there will be no title shot for him. Last one for me. I don't know if I've heard as much anticipation for a press conference as I have this week. You've got names like Ian Gary, Paddy Pimm, and Tony Ferguson up there. Are you going to have lines for all of them, or are you just going to sit there and let them come to you? I'm chaos. I'm unpredictable. No one knows what I'm going to do next, but I can tell you one thing that... You know, you play with the ball, you're going to get the horns. Uh, Colby, you've obviously fought some uh, pretty high level former champions like Tyron, Kamaru, RDA, Robbie Lawler. So I'm curious, where does Leon rank compared to all these former champions that you face? You know, he's at the bottom of, of the end of where the guys that I fought. You know, I fought in the first battle Hall of Famers, and this guy's had a pretty easy path. You know, everybody likes to talk about my path to get here. Let's talk about his path. Who'd he beat? Uh, RDA a couple years after I washed him up. Who'd he beat? 40 year old Cerrone? 40 year old Nate Diaz? Ricky Waters? Where does his impressive resume come from? Where's his all his young contenders on his resume? He doesn't have it. It never happened. So, you know, he's not that impressive. Saturday night, I'm going to expose him for what he is. And that's nothing more than a coward and, and a low IQ idiot. So, if he wasn't the champion right now, would a fight with Leon even interest you at this point? Like, if they offered you, like, like a number one contender fight against Leon? You know, the fights that offer me is the biggest and best fights the UFC come. This is a publicly traded multi-billion dollar company. Could you imagine if I just fought some prelim fighter? We'd be defrauding investors. The UFC would get sued. I love this company. This company changed my life. I want to do good and the best business for this company. And this is a business. It's about making money. So, 
You know, I want to do whatever the direction the UFC wants to go. I want the biggest and best fights. I want, that's who I want. So if he's at the top of the, the totem pole at that time, then sure, yeah, I'd love to do it. You know, I've wanted to fight him for years, but here we are, undisputed, baby. And Colby Chaos Covington, there's nothing more that Colby Chaos Covington wants than to be undisputed champion. That's exactly what Colby Chaos Covington is going to do on Saturday night. And he's been pretty vocal saying that. He doesn't see you fighting guys like Shafkat or Bilal's or any of these young guys coming up. And I've also seen interviews where you say you would want to be an active champion if you win the belt. So I'm curious, if, if you do win the belt, what would you want your title rank to look like? Would you would you just keep fighting these number one contenders, or would you look for these big super fights in other divisions? Of course, you know I'm in my prime physically and mentally. You know now I'm in a place where I've never been before. You know and I feel really secure in myself. I feel like I've really well rounded out my skills you know, in this time off and gotten better. You know, why these guys are turning me down is the reason I'm in this position because, you know, I say yes, yes, yes to every single fight. I've never said no. There's no other guy in the history of the sport that said more yeses to a fight than Kobe Chaos Covington. So, you know, Kobe's a yes man. He loves his company. He'll say yes to any fight. I just want to make the biggest and best fights for the fans and, and for the company, and that's exactly what I'll do when I'm champion. Leon also said that he, when we asked him, he, the UFC probably wants you to win this fight. So I'm curious, do you feel that way, that the UFC wants you as champion? Um, you know, the UFC doesn't really have favorites. They don't, they don't care who the champions are going to be. They put the two best guys that are deserving of the, of, the, of the shots, and they let them fight it out for us. So that's what's going to happen on Saturday night. Leon can keep making these excuses, keep saying the stupid stuff that, that no one believes. I mean, Saturday night it will determine who's the best fighter in the world, and there's no one more deserving of this title than me. Last one for me, there are rumors that maybe Donald Trump might put the belt around you if you do win. Is there any truth to that? There is truth to that. Donald Trump will be in attendance Saturday night, and uh, he's going to wrap that belt around me. I love Dana White, but I just asked Dana if you know, he could let Donald put it around me, so you know it's going to be a spectacle. It doesn't matter who they put in there Saturday night. They could put the Hulk in there Saturday night. No one's beating me in front of Donald Trump. We're going to make America great again. We're going to make the UFC welterweight division great again because Leon's made an absolute joke of it. Colby to you right over here. Um, uh, for so long, really, the only thing between you and the title was Kamaru, and since you guys parted, he's been on a, a skid. He's lost three in a row. Just kind of curious what you make of that. And do you feel like if you go out there, you win on Saturday, there's still maybe some unfinished business that he'll come back down to 170 and you guys will fight again? You know, when I fought Uzman, he was in his absolute prime, number one pound for pound. So you guys want to talk about my resume and who I fought. I fought the number one pound for pound fighter multiple times. And, and in my opinion, I beat him. I beat him seven out of ten rounds. You go back to my fight, Madison Square Garden, go rewatch that fight. Every single fan in that arena told me, hey, you won rounds three, four, and five. It was clear as day. He won one round, the second round. The first round was a toss-up. So I do feel like I beat him, you know, in that fight. And I feel like I'm a better fighter than him. So, you know, he... I would love to see that trilogy. That's another fight that plays out. So all these other contenders can wait because that's bigger business, you know, that, that me and who's going to have to settle. It's unfinished business. Thanks. Hey, Colby. Um, with you not willing to give Bilal the title shot, there's also, there is some welterweights on the card with you. Um, would you give a, a title shot to the winner of Shaw Conference, Winter Boy, maybe Ian Gary? If any of those guys interest you? Who said I'm not willing? I'm willing to do whatever the UFC wants to do, and I don't make the calls around here. Last time I checked, Leon tried to call the shots and say, oh, Kobe's not fighting for the title. No chance. No way Kobe's fighting for the title. L -l -l where are we here today? We found out who called the shots. When none of us fighters call the shots. It's up to the company. It's up to Hunter Campbell, Dana White, Ari Emanuel. These are the guys that call the shots. So whatever they decide is the biggest and best business for this multi-billion dollar publicly traded company, then that's what we'll do next. Um, was there a reason why Dana did not let you walk out with Trump this Saturday? Yeah, he, there was a reason. He called me about that, and you know, I asked Donald Trump if he could walk me out. I saw him at Mar-a-Lago before I left, and you know, I got this suit signed by him, and and uh, he said he would walk me out. And then we called uh, the UFC and Dana, and he said logistically, Kobe, it would just be too tough. You know, he has you know almost a hundred Secret Service that come with them, and it just it, it would be too much mayhem to get you to the cage and get him there at the same time. So. Unfortunately, Dan, uh, Donald Trump won't be able to walk out with me, but you know he'll be cage side, and I'll give him a hug before I enter that octagon, and you know I'll see him cage side, and you know he'll be putting that both around my waist Saturday night. Speaking of Marlon, what do you think of his fight against Tom Dachimaev? 
I thought he beat him. I thought he beat Kumshaw. You know, he, he he was striking him. You know, I thought he dropped him. You know, Kumshaw was scared to strike with him. He didn't even hit him once. You know, look at the significant strikes that were landed. So, you know, if that was a five round fight, Usman would have destroyed him. He would have finished him in those championship rounds. So, I thought he looked good. He took him on what four or five days notice. You know, at, at one eighty five. So up a weight class. He never fought in that weight class. So, you know, I thought he beat him, and, and I think a lot of the fans thought that as well. And fine for me. Um... Well, uh, earlier this week, you know, you called Sean Strickland an, an, an excuse of a human being. What's up with that? Dude, can you not all relate? I mean, the guy said that women only belong in the kitchen. If you told that to my friend Candace Owens, she would literally run circles around him and make him look like the amateur jabroni that he is. I mean, the guy's the easiest fight in the division. I mean, there's a reason that he ran away from my division, because he couldn't cut it. So... You know, that's, I just, I'm just speaking facts and what everybody believes and, and thinks as well. Colby got me to your left. Um, you said that Leon is a quitter. Is that just the summation that you've made from what you saw in this fight with Kamaru Usman, or was that something that you saw in him beforehand? Yeah, it was the first fight with Usman where I saw that he has that quitter. And so, you know, I'm going to bring him to that dark place, and, you know, I'm going to bring out the dog in me and the quitter in him. So. I knew he had to be downside. Even in the second fight, he had it too, and his coach had to wake him up. Leon, Leon, oh, come on, you're about to get quitting. Mama, give, give, don't give up. Mama, mama. So, you know, he's a mumbling idiot. And Saturday night, I'm going to bring that quitter back out of him. And obviously, this is your third opportunity of getting the undisputed title. Would it be a lot sweeter for you getting it this time around than the first time, considering you picked yourself up the Mer Pro Book canvas twice to do it? Absolutely, you know, it's, it's the same path and journey that Donald Trump's had to go on. We've been cheated out of, you know, titles, out of, you know, his presidency, out of my last undisputed title in Madison Square Garden. But there's one thing about me and Donald Trump, and that's when we face adversity, we can be delayed, but we will not be denied. And final one for me, if there's one thing that impresses you about Leon, what is it? The guy has no redeeming qualities. He's not likable. I mean, literally, the guy's made a joke of our division. He wants to sit and not fight anybody. He just wants to sit on the ring forever as the placeholder. So there's literally nothing I can say good about Leon. This fight's personal. He has what I want, and that's the undisputed title. And there's nothing more that Colby Covington wants than that undisputed title. So Colby Covington gets what he wants. Colby, right here. Over here. Just wanted to get your thoughts right here, man. Just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, the Melt Boys and your relationship. I know you just signed with Team Happy Dad. We've seen you working on with Kyle in Miami. What's your relationship with those guys like right now? Yeah, I got a, I got a great relationship with uh, the Happy Dad team and the Melt Boys. Big shout out to Kyle Porcard. You know, he, he did a lot of training with me this camp. And, you know, that, that guy has the dog in him. So it was great to train with a guy that has the dog in him. He was able to push me to a level that I didn't think I could be pushed to. So we got some great, great strength and conditioning training in together. And, I feel like that's going to make a difference on Saturday. Colby right behind you. The UFC recently went to Miami again for the first time in a long time. It looks like they're heading back soon. Now that Miami is back on the travel schedule, is that one of your bucket list items before you call it a career? Absolutely. Everybody knows I'm the king of Miami. I run those streets. I train in the heart of Miami, in Hialeah, Miami. So, you know, no one's more Miami than me. You know, I've been there for 15 years now. So. You know, I love representing the 305. You know, I put them on my back every time I go into fight. Everybody knows I love my South Beach Mamacitas. They're the ones that give me the best cardio for my fights. You know, the bedroom cardio. That's why I'm the cardio king. So, yeah, I would love to, to fight and headline in Miami. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll come and, and show up and fight in, in March. You know, I think that's a good turnaround time. So, you know, hopefully they'll let me headline that, that March Miami show. Or if not, you know, maybe we can come back in the summer or before years in. I asked uh, Dana earlier in one of the contender conferences about potentially having UFC 305 out in Miami. Is that something you'd like to do? Oh, man, that would be so incredible. I, I love the sound of that. I think that's a, that's a great storyline. and No better way than Miami's son, Colby Covington. So I'd love to do that. That'd, that'd be a dream come true. And, you know, it'd, be, it'd bring the best out of me, fighting in, in my backyard and, and uh, getting to sleep in my own bed. That'd be, it'd be so amazing. You know, I wouldn't turn down a home day like Leon would. And the last one for me, uh, obviously, uh, you and Kamaru Usman have had one of the most historic and heated rivalries in the UFC, but he's showing you a lot of respect going into this fight week. I mean, what do you make of all that respect he's been giving you? Yeah, it was definitely surprising. It caught me off guard. You know, I, I really don't know what to make of it. I haven't really processed it fully, but, you know, I can tell you one thing is that he spent 10 rounds in that octagon with me, and he knows what I'm capable of. He knows the dog that's inside of me. So, you know, he's only speaking truth and facts, and, and uh, 
Shout out to, to Marty. Thank you. Bobby, hey, I'm here. Uh, Shoka Takmona said that he will, he will be brief, he will bring the uh, belt to Kazakhstan next year. Will you be ready to face him if you become a new champion? Whoever the UFC deems necessary, that's who I want to fight. You know, if it's shit rap, if it's Islam, if it's fucking Sean Strickland. You know, one thing's for sure, I'm going to make welterweight division great again. I'm here to stay, and if these guys want to fight me, they're going to have to come to my division. So, you know, like I said before, it's a publicly traded company, multi-billion dollar company. I love this company so much, changed my life. So I want to do the biggest and best business for the company. So whatever Hunter, Dana, and Ari decide, I'm up for it. Dude. I never said no to a fight. I've said yes to every single fight in my career. But Never pulled out of one fight either. Will you be ready to fight more often if you become a champion? Of course. I, I wanted to be more often and more active. You know, this is because other people have been turning down fights with me. Come shot Jemaya, ran away from me. He was scared of my shadow. So, of course, he had to go up to an easy weight division. Everybody knows 170 is the premier division. It's the toughest division in the UFC. So, this is what most people on this earth walk around at, about 170 pounds. So. You know, of course, you know, Kamshaw was scared to fight, and then there were some other people that were scared to fight, and, you know, now we're here. Here, All I can do is, is fight who they put in front of me. I can't go out there and fight some prelim guy because then they defraud the investors and they're going to get sued. So, you know, anytime, anywhere, anyone, that's Colby Chaos coming to his moniker. Right here, Colby. Leon said ahead of this fight that he just doesn't want to fight you or wait, he wants to retire you. What's your response to that? Wow, it's the first time he opened his mouth this whole time. He was scared to fight me. I mean, he got forced to fight me, so he didn't want to fight me. He knows deep down inside what, what's going to happen on Saturday night and what Colby's coming after him. So what I have to say to that is he's definitely not going to retire me. I just signed a new contract with the UFC. I'm going to be a lifetime fighter. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I'm physically and mentally in my prime, and the best is yet to come from Colby Chaos coming to you said you want to make the welterweight division great again. Is there any thoughts about going up and making the middleweight division great once again? How can I make, you know, it's, I could probably make them both great at the same time, but, you know, my focus is on welterweight. I want to make this division great again. I want to solidify myself as an all-time great and the greatest welterweight of all time, you know, so I have a lot of work to do in welterweight. And luckily, I'm young and 35 years young and in my prime and mentally and physically, so... You know, I got a lot of work to do, and I want to clear out this division first before I go up to middleweight. So, anybody who wants to fight, super fight or not, you're going to have to come to welterweight. Last one for me, you paraded the suit that you're wearing there before you came on with us. Uh, what's the backstory to it? Yeah, so the backstory is, you know, it's a Make America, Make America Great Again suit. They got Donald Trump to sign it, so you know this, this suit is worth a pretty penny now. And then I got Trump's mugshot. His unlawful, you know, indictment. What a joke, you know. I can't believe they're using the justice system against us. Do you guys realize how corrupt this system is right now? Like, they're, they're weaponizing the judici judicial system, the, the DOJ. I mean, it's, it's political persecution. They're scared of him. They know he's the greatest threat to the democracy. He's the greatest threat to the swamp. And, you know, he stands for democracy, and they don't like that. There's a bunch of communist people running this country right now. And we need to get them out. Our borders are wide open. Inflation is higher than it's ever been. I mean, people are, our streets are burning. And we're sending money to Ukraine? For what? What about America? What happened to America first? That's what Donald Trump stands for, is America first. So right now, it's America last. We need to make America great again. 2024 is our last stand. If Donald Trump doesn't get back in office, this country is done. Jake, last question. Kobe over here. Uh, Kobe, I am curious, what did Donald Trump say when he saw his mug shot on your jacket? <laughs> he loved it. He was like, man, that's, that's creative. I love it. That's amazing. And he gave me some advice on the fight, and then he just said, hey, man, you know, I'm going to be in the arena Saturday night. Don't, don't feel the pressure. You know, when I come, it, you know, it, it creates a lot of pressure. He's the most famous person on planet Earth. There's no one more famous than Donald Trump. So he just said to just relax, be calm, and do what I do best, win championships, fight, and have fun. And, you know, we'll, we'll hang out and enjoy Mar-a-Lago afterwards. Going back to one of the previous questions, uh, being a double champion is one of those things that seems to be very popular these days. Can I ask, like, what is it about welterweight? Do you just feel you perform best there? Because I'd imagine you're going along win streak, that temptation has to be big. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always, you know, big to try and make more history. I've created some of the best, best and most iconic moments in the history of the sport. First fighter to ever go to the White House, first fighter to hang out with a sitting president, first 
fighter to get a first family to a fight, you know, strikes records, all these records, champion after champion beaten, first ballot Hall of Famer after first ballot Hall of Famer, but, you know, I want to do, I want to keep doing things that people haven't done before, so, you know, I want to go for that triple championship, and, and, you know, I think I could do it, you know, I think I can make 55, and, and I think I can go up to 85, and that's the easiest fight if Sean Strickland's still there, so, I may look to go, you know, beat Sean first, and then go down to 55 and beat that mongoloid, but, you know, I have unfinished business at 170, and the only way to make this division great again is to be active and to clear out the division first. So until I do that, I'm not going to entertain anybody else. Thank you.